Happy anniversary, Bobby, on the 50th anniversary of that Stanley Cup winning goal in 1970. Hope you and your family are all safe. I, I wonder what is your snapshot memory of the goal? Can you still see yourself scoring it or are you like the rest of us and just see that photograph? Well, I, I see the photograph a lot. Uh, but yeah, I, I can remember it was a, um, not, a, not only a great moment for me, but for, for the team, for the city of Boston, Boston Bruins fans. Uh, it was the first uh, Stanley Cup, uh, I believe, in 29 years. And uh, sure, I, I remember the goal. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the most important thing was the Stanley Cup. I mean, we, growing up in Canada, young hockey player, uh, uh, everyone's dream is to play in the, in the NHL and to be on a Stanley Cup team. And, and I was realizing a dream, so that was the important thing. I think most of us have that Ray Lussier photograph a as our memory. When's the first time you saw that photo? Uh, we used to stay at the Colonial Hilton, which is in Linfield, during the playoffs. And my father was also staying at the hotel. He was down for the series. And uh, I went in the morning to have breakfast with him. And uh, he pulled out the, I, I believe it was, a, it was called the Record American then. And he had uh, gone into the uh, shop and bought a <coughs> newspaper and, and saw the photo. And he showed me that morning, but that was the first time I had seen it. Uh, thousands and thousands of people have that photo hanging in their house somewhere. I, do you have it hanging in your house? Uh, I have, I have uh, one. I have a, uh, a painting of it, uh, but I don't. I don't have them splashed all over the place, James. Uh, but uh, yeah, I have. I, know you're uh, I, for that. I have. I have one in my house. Have you ever tried to guesstimate how many thousands of times you've signed that photo? I, I, I can't even guess. Uh, I can't even guess. Uh, no. <laughs> how how much of uh, how much of it was uh, Picard's trip of you, the flying through the air, and how much of it was your celebration? Uh, a lot of it was a celebration. Uh, you know, when I went across the front of the net, um, I'd like to tell you that I saw Glenn's, Glenn Hall's legs open and I turned the puck on its edge and I slipped it through. But all I was trying to do was get it on net. And when a goalie's moving across, you know, it's pretty tough to keep the legs closed. So it went between his legs. And I saw it go in as I was going by. So part of it was a jump. And uh, Noel Picard, the St. Louis defenseman, he helped a little bit by, by lifting, lifting me up. But uh, I did see it go in. And, did you ever talk uh, to Noel after? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I've, uh, a few times I talked to Noel, yes. Yes. And, and I understand say you've always felt a little bad for Glenn Hall because he's been in that photograph so <laughs> many uh, well, over the years. Uh, Glenn, uh, <laughs> I saw Glenn one time. He says, is that the only goal you ever scored? And if, 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 if you think about it, here's... Uh, our, uh, Arguably one of the best goalies ever in the game, and uh, uh, I think 585 games, uh, consecutive games, goalie without a mask, Stanley Cups. One of the, as I said, one of the best in the game, and he's got to, he's got to listen about one goal. Uh, it's just not right. That's just wrong. Glenn was one of the greats, and not only a, a great player, but a, but a wonderful human being. And uh, um, you know, unfortunately, he has to answer about the one goal all the time where he was such a great uh, goalie and there, was, there were so many questions we could ask him about his game. You were the type of player that didn't love celebrating goals and I'm sure it's the same with this thing. We, we have to ask you endless questions about it. It's the 50 year anniversary, but I know you always would rather prefer talking about the other guys on the team and what it meant to the team to win that Stanley Cup. Well, yes, I mean, uh, my mother <laughs> taught me to not to don't be bragging about things. It's it's not necessary. But you know, tennis is a an individual sport. Golf is an individual sport. Hockey is a is a team sport. And, and we want we had one heck of a heck of a team. Uh, if you go through our lineup, uh, look, I'm not sitting here trying to be humble or anything like that. I was happy to score the goal. But we had a had a team, and we're a, it's a team game. And, and we had a, a heck of a team from, from, from coaching to, to trainers, to management, uh, players. Uh, we just had a, a wonderful team. And to me, that's what it's all about. And that's why we should talk about the team because 
I was part of the puzzle, but we had a <laughs> lot of pieces and a lot of pieces had to come together to be the champion and, and we did. Uh, you were a big part of that puzzle. And if that goal wasn't the number one individual memory of 6970, uh, was it the goal that made you the first defenseman to reach 100 points? No, nope, no. Nope. The highlight of that year was to follow Johnny Busick, our captain, around the Boston Garden with the Stanley Cup uh, high overhead. That, that was a dream come true. Um, I had seen it on television, and to be part of that, that to me, that was the highlight. The following chief around and having my father there celebrating with us, having all the fathers, many of the fathers were there. It was a very special, special day. We had some moms there, not a lot of them, but we had, did have some moms there, but we knew they were all, all the mothers were watching on television. So um, we, we knew they were celebrating with us. Bobby, with, with your agency, you're still very much involved with the game. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the idea of hockey trying to come back at some point this summer and finish this season? Well, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with trying to come back, but to think that you're going to finish the season and have a playoff and start next season, I think we have to be really careful. Uh, we, you know, we just cannot come back uh, until the players are safe, the families are safe, anybody connected with those games, around the games, if they do come back, that everyone is safe. It's, you know, this, this is, this is bigger, bigger than the game. Uh, this is life and death, and we have to be real careful and real sure that everyone is prepared. And we can't be putting our players back out on the ice without proper conditioning and sitting at home the way they are now. It's, you know, it's pretty difficult to stay in hockey, hockey skating shape. So I think we have to be real careful uh, uh, coming back too soon, uh, expecting our players to go out and perform too early. I think it's important that we get them in shape and that everyone is safe. This, you know, there are more important things than sports. I mean, I'm the biggest hockey fan in the world and I miss it. I miss it a lot. But we can't be, be coming back too quickly. We have to be, things have to be right for us, for, for, for the game to start up and for the players to come back. Very well said. Uh, listen, and really appreciate your time and uh, we'll do this again on the 100th anniversary of the goal. Thanks, James. Nice being with you.